Hi everyone. Um, after Aunt Beck's Creations Live yesterday, I thought it might be a good idea to do uh, sort of a <clears throat> basic machine information kind of thing. I have more than one machine, so I can give you a little bit of information. I also have some rules, some really big rules about things not to do to make your life much better if you're sewing. All sewing machines have hand wheels. This one is right here. This one is over here on this side. You never turn one of those backwards. That's a sewing machine. It's a rule. I, I cannot guarantee that every sewing machine in the world cannot be turned backwards, but I have never, in 56 years of sewing, seen one that turned backwards. Now that's not true when it comes to a serger, but on a sewing machine, I've never seen one turn backwards. The problem with turning one backwards is that they're weighted. They're designed to go forward. Your thread path is designed to pull the thread forward. That hand wheel turning backwards is going to tangle your threads up. So always turn the thread wheel, hand wheel back, forwards, 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 towards you. Now, another rule is this little sewing machine only has one of them. Oops, sorry. I'm using my little camera and it's not as easy to do as you think. <laughs> Anyways, there's only one thread pin here. That's because this machine only does a straight stitch. It's actually older than I am. Then, most machines though have some way to have two thread spool pins. Two of these things right here. Okay? Now, some of the new machines, the spool pin lays sideways, and then there'll be an upright one. There's always something where you can, on the newer machines, for the most part, do a twin needle. That is the only time you use two pins. Do not store extra bobbins, extra spools of thread. You only put something on the one spool pin that you're using. Why? Because the little thread tails will come down here, they'll get caught around this hand wheel, and they will cause the weight to be off on your machine, and there will be an imbalance which will cause a lot of problems and then down the road damage. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to take a hand wheel off a machine to clear out a thread nest that's down in there. That is just, it's not a storage pin, okay? So, two rules. Never turn this backwards. Never use a spool pin as storage. Then, there's another thing that all sewing machines have. They have some way to wind your bobbin. Bobbin winders are all different. You should have a book for your machine, and when you wind your bobbin, there should be instructions as to where to thread your, put your thread to do so. My machine, the thread, oops, comes from this spool pin, around this little pin, and back to the bobbin. On this machine, it comes from the spool pin down here and up to the bobbin. So every machine is a little different. You're going to have to read your book on that one. Every machine also has a tension assembly. Now, the tension knob on this one is right here, but the tension assembly are these little discs that are in here. Okay? And, oops, excuse me, this machine, the tension assembly is here, and there's little discs right at the end of my finger, this little knob is right here. Most tension assemblies have numbers on the front of them. Let me see if I can get it really close. 
okay? You should be set right about in the middle. Let me go up here. Don't mean to give you guys a headache. See how mine has a red line? That's because there's four, there's six, five is right in the middle. And nine times out of ten, playing with these things does not help anything. All it does is cause issues. Okay? So now all machines besides the tension assembly also have a take-up lever. I'm going to pull this one out where you can find it. I also need to get that thread out of there. That's another rule. You clip your thread and you pull it from this needle. Do not pull backwards like so. Okay? If you do, what's happening is it can catch in the wrong place. But all machines have let me see if I can get it out where it peeks out. There we go. Let me see if I can show you. A thread take up. Okay, that one's right there. This one's easier to see, and that was one of the things about this the, why I wanted to have both machines out. This one's right here, and I'm going to make it go up and down so you see. Okay, and what that does is it pulls the thread off of the spool pin and gives it slack so that your needle can make your stitch. Okay? If those are not threaded properly, you will have issues. Okay? Now then, when we're threading our machine, there's a thread path. Usually, it comes from a spool pin to another catch through your tension assembly down around something at the bottom, up through your take-up lever, and down to something above the needle. Let me see if I can get close. Okay, something right here above the needle, and then into the needle. Okay, on this one, spool pin. Okay, this one is weird. I have to always remember where it goes. Spool pin. Here's a little thread path. It does not have one on the back the way the bigger machine has. Around your tension assembly, behind this little guy, through the take-up lever, and then back down through a couple of spots above the needle. Okay. Rule number three. Never ever thread your machine with the presser foot lever down. Now the presser foot lever is on the back side of the machines. Hopefully we can see that. And it's always back here. Okay? Even if you don't have a foot on your machine, okay, let me get you back in focus. Sorry guys. Even if your foot's not on your machine, do not have that lever down. Okay, why? Why for rule number three? Because when the lever is down, when the presser foot lever is down, it closes your tension discs. Even over here on this old machine, it pinches the discs together. If you try to thread your machine with the tension closed, what's going to happen is your thread is going to come across here and it's going to sit on top, sorry, on top of your tension discs. It's not going to go in them where it belongs. The same will happen on this. It will sit on the outside of the discs and not go seated into the discs. Okay? So always, always, always have your presser foot lever up. Okay. Needles. Another thing that will make your life miserable is using a bad needle. And frankly, I don't care how much your sewing machine costs, buy good needles. I wouldn't buy anything but Schmetz needles or possibly Bernina needles. Um, Bernina no longer packages needles, I don't think. But 
the reason being is if if you knew how needles were made thousands of hundreds of them are made and they are banged around together okay if those needles do not have a sharp tip let me see if I can get this nope you can't see a thing if the tip of that needle has any burrs on it if the the groove for the the thread has any burrs on it it will not function right it won't pick up your thread so if you have threaded your machine properly with your presser foot lever up and you have your tension assembly in the middle and when we get to the bobbin and the bobbin is threaded correctly the next thing I will tell you is nine times out of ten the next thing is a bad needle now on most sewing machines there is let me undo that okay let me see if I can show it to you I do not know if I can get close enough let me try No, yeah, it's not going to let me get real close, but okay. There's a flat side on a needle. See, can you see there? There we go. Flat side and round side. Okay. On most sewing machines, the flat side goes towards the back of the needle or, or the back of the sewing machine or away from you. Okay. There, there are exceptions to that. It just so happens that this little baby over here, the back, the flat side of the needle goes towards the um, right hand side of the machine. It's, it's one of the only machines I know that does that. If you don't know your machine and your book doesn't tell you, the first thing I would do is put that needle in with the flat side to the back because that is usually where it goes. Another problem that you can have is if your needle is not seated all the way up into the needle bar okay if that needle has dropped at all from its topmost position where it belongs you won't get good stitches and you'll have a mess okay so we have three rules now no hand wheels backwards no storage on spool pins and never threading Okay, I'm sorry guys about the stopping and the starting. It, it is difficult. Okay, now another thing about your machines and another rule is that when you wind your bobbin, and bobbins can be different and they can go in differently. Aunt Beck's Creations bobbin drops in. Those are nice. I have never liked them. That's my opinion. This one makes me happy. Um, this is my favorite machine of all times. I have had it since it first came out. I think it's 20 years. No, it may be, lo it may be closer to 30 years old. Um, I love it, and I, I don't use it all the time, but I love it. This one I got because it's just too bloody cute, okay? And that makes a beautiful straight stitch. It's designed to take to quilting seminars and things like that. Well... It actually was designed back in the day for whoever didn't have a space for a sewing machine. Okay, I was going to tell you your fourth rule. My little bobbins have holes. You notice they're different sizes because bobbins are different for different machines. These bobbins can look all the same on the wall, but they are not the same. You need to make sure you have a bobbin designed for your machine. Um, the drop-in bobbins are very often plastic, and that's fine, but make sure that you have the proper bobbins. Reason being, once again, these bobbins are weighted. They're designed to fit the housings that they come in, and they're weighted so that the area that they go to has the right weight for spin. My Bernina bobbins look exactly like some other machine bobbins except for the addition of an extra ring in the center which is adding weight. 
The other thing I will tell you is if, if you can get them, stainless steel bobbins are much nicer, but if your machine is designed for plastic bobbins, they're too heavy. So make sure you get the right bobbin. Plastic bobbins or metal bobbins, when you go to, to thread your machine, thread your bobbin, so many people will bring a piece of thread through the hole of the bobbin so that they can hold on to it while it's spinning up here. If you do that and you have a thread tail sticking out of your bobbin, you're asking for trouble because it's not going to sit into your bobbin case properly and it's going to catch on things. It's not going to fit down in there. It's going to catch on things. So rule number four, do not allow any threads to come out of the side of your bobbin. Okay? Now, bobbins go in differently. Oh dear. This is a real two-handed operation. I don't know if I can do this without... I'm going to turn this off again. Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm really sorry, guys. Like I said, this is, this is not the easiest video to make. Um, another thing is you should do the same thing you do when you take your thread out of your machine, and that is clip your thread so that as you pull the bobbin out, you're not pulling things backwards. Don't pull a whole 12 or 15 inches of thread backwards through the tension assembly on the bottom of your machine in the in your bobbin case. It's not a wise decision. Now, my bobbin case has a little finger up there, a little hole, and there's a little metal piece there. That's the tension assemblies. Okay, this bobbin case does not have the little finger, but it has the little plate right here for your tension assemblies. You see that little screw? And that little screw, don't mess with them. Okay? They hold those plates on in a very specific way. Blast. Okay? They hold the plates on in a very, very specific tension. Now, over the years, I've been taught I know how to adjust that. But if you don't know how to adjust that and you play with that screw, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time you're messing it up. Because everybody will tell you their machine's messing up on the bottom, the thread on the bottom's all loose. Well, that's because your thread's not threaded right on top. Not on the bottom, but on top. So don't play with your little screws on your bobbin cases. That's one of the reasons why they went to drop in bobbins because people don't know how to play with that screw in there. It's a lot harder to get to. Okay, so when I put my thread in my bobbin case, I am told that it's to come out of this the um, bobbin counterclockwise. Not clockwise, see how it is right now. It needs to go in that way. And basically that means it's pulling backwards when it comes out. And that's how it's supposed to be. Your book should tell you. You just drop this in and I there's no way I can get this thread in there one-handed I don't think. But it goes into a little slot. Yeah. And then we'll pull out to where it's pulling out through that top hole. The same is true with this one. It goes in counterclockwise. Where's my little slot? goes in counterclockwise. Now see, it's one of those things that I just do automatically. And then we'll go in this little slot and be pulled up underneath this little plate. Okay, so my bobbin goes in here like so. And when it goes in, it will make a sound just like that. This one will too. And the, it goes in the end of the machine over here. Do you remember I told you that this needle actually was different than the others? That's one of the reasons why this goes in this end. It's about how the threads picked up um, today. Okay. 
I am pretty sure that's the general basics of your sewing machine. Now, presser foot wise, there's a lot of information about presser feet, and I think once I get this video sorted out because it's going to take a while tonight, I will do a presser foot video for tomorrow or the next day and talk to you a little bit about standard presser feet. Um, if you can tell, they all different machines have different attach ways to attach the presser feet. This is the Bernina, and they and it's an actually an old Bernina, so the presser feet are different on the new ones, but they still go on like this, and they have a little latch. Very nice thing for that. This one over here has to be taken on and off with this big screw. It's considered what what is considered a short shank machine, and but there are presser feet for this machine. Now I I bought this of course way used and so none of the attachments are here but I can get new attachments for it um, these machines actually came with rufflers and all kinds of things even though this machine only does a straight stitch I think I have covered oh there's another little difference in machines you see this one has a nice flat bed like that and this one has a, what's called a free arm I have a plate that slides on to the free arm. So there's usually something. Becky's, Aunt Bex has a, a tray that sits in front that holds her attachments. All machines are a little bit different. I have a big tray that hooks in the back. Okay. Now, I didn't talk about something called feed dogs. Let me take this back off of here. These little bumpy things right here are called feed dogs and all machines have them I'm sorry I didn't mean to move you so fast this one they're a little different they're narrower the stitches straight on this machine let's see if I can get this off okay a little bit different on most machines newer than that one you can drop the feed dogs let me get, if I can get close, and the feed dogs are gone where they aren't going to touch. If we are going to do some freehand work, those feed dogs must be dropped like that. Um, mine, if I turn them back up, it won't come up until the machine's turned on and plugged in. So, feed dogs are important. That's another reason you do not turn your hand wheel backwards, because then it makes the feed dogs tangle up. They do move backwards when you are sewing in reverse. Okay, so I'm going to go over the rules one more time that I can think of. I think I ended up with five. Do not turn your hand wheel backwards. Do not use your extra spool pin as a thread keeper. It is not. Do not thread your machine with the presser foot lever in the down position. Always in the up position. Do not allow little thread tails to be coming out of your bobbin case. The first thing you do if you have a problem is to re-thread your machine from scratch. Do not think that you threaded it right because I would say mm, less than a tenth of a percent of the time is the machine broken when you've got a problem with tension. It is usually not threaded right. Then the next thing that can be wrong is that your needle can be bad. And believe me, they can be bad easily and quickly. It doesn't take much to make one bad. If you have bent it at all, it won't pick up your stitch right. If it has a point that's off, it won't pick up your stitch right. So, first thing to do is re-thread it. Second thing to do is change your needle. Now, if your bobbin case is not threaded right, your bobbin 
you're going to have a problem too. So those are the super, super basics. And I hope I gave you some information that you can use. And I hope that this video was of help. And I hope I can clean it up enough so that it's not crazy to watch. I am sorry for the out of focus and and whatnot. I will do my best to fix it. Um, guys, I'll try to do some more. And if there's information that you would like to have, please ask. Please comment. Please tell me that you didn't understand something or that I can help you in some way so that you can sew and have fun sewing. Okay, I'm going to go. Oh, well, no, I can't go without my creativity um, quote, can I? Let's see here. Okay, that's a good one. Creativity is a journey, not a destination. Oops, sorry for that, guys. We'll go up there. So creativity is a journey, not a destination. I hope you all have a great day. Please have fun. And like I said, if you have any questions, please ask. Bye-bye.